Belgian Motor House in Chicago's famous Hotel Sherman. It's time now for your family to join the millions of families from coast to coast and listen to America's favorite Don McNeil and his breakfast club. And now here's your Toastmaster, Don McNeil. Good morning, breakfast lovers. Good morning to you. Just a First call to breakfast for all of you out there. Well, good morning to you. Glad to see you. Uh, this uh, Wednesday is a little unusual because uh, it's starting out at about 60 right now, and instead of going up like it usually does, the temperature is going down. Yes, sir. Now, this little gal, Alan, Ann Leonardo, who's singing for us this week, uh, I believe uh, you brought out in your conversation the day before yesterday, Ann, that you also play piano. That's right. Uh-huh. Do you ever accompany yourself? Yes, I do, quite often, Don. I wonder if you'd uh, like to try that on our show here. I'd love to. All right. Ann is wending her way now yeah. over to uh, Bill Krenz's stronghold mm-hmm. over at the piano there. And uh, she's this cute little 19-year-old gal is seating herself there. She's, uh, I'd like to describe Anne for you. She sits there at the concert grand. Uh, she uh, looks very pert. She's got very dark hair, dark lashes. Uh, she has a lovely smile, white teeth, presumably your own. Is that right, Anne? Yes, they are. <laughs> uh, and she's wearing, what do you, is that a halter dress? I think that's what you'd call it. Huh? A what? A jumper? Really? Uh-huh. Well, anyway, it's got suspenders on, like, and, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's very cute and nice looking. Thank you. Uh, now that you're at the piano, Ann, what are you going to do for us? How about Everybody Loves My Baby? All right, let's have it. Everybody loves my baby, but my baby don't love nobody but me. And nobody but me. Everybody wants my baby, but my baby don't want nobody but me. That's plain to see. I am his sweet patootie, and he's my loving man. Knows how to do his duty, loves me like nobody can. That's why everybody loves my baby, but my baby don't love nobody but me. And nobody but me. plays a good piano, doesn't she? Yeah. And sings Anne Leonardo. 
It's very cute. All right, let's talk to James Garrels of Hedrick, Idaho, Iowa. Uh, Margaret Ann Wilson of Montrose, Michigan. Rex Boucher of Sims, Indiana. Uh, Jim uh, Graves from Swayze, uh, Indiana. I got some assorted characters up here now. <clears throat> let's see, uh, let's start in with the uh, first one I call James. James, uh, James, what's your last name, James? Graves. Graves. There's another James, too, isn't there? You? Girls. Yeah. Yeah. What's your first, what's your last name? Girls. Girls. You're from, uh... Hedrick, Iowa. Hedrick, Iowa. Is this mic working all right? Okay, uh, I guess you're just speaking a little low. Would you speak up a little so that the waiting world may hear your beautiful pearls of wisdom? Yeah. Uh, all right, James. <laughs> uh, you propound an interesting subject here, and I think we'll discuss it with you and everybody else uh, who's going to high school. What is the subject, James? Oh, I want to know what my experiences would be like if I had my high school days to do over. Yeah, knowing what you do now, yeah. and you would start high school over again. Yeah. Well, you answer that. What do you think, boy? I expect they'd be some pretty good ones. Yeah. <laughs> now that you know all about life and all. Oh, I hope. You know all about life, do you? Oh, a little bit. Do you? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't, so I'm very much interested in, in your, your viewpoints. Uh, do you think, uh, James, that's true? That Do you think you'd really conduct yourself any differently, knowing what you do now, after graduation? No, I don't right? suppose. I don't suppose either. Probably make the same mistakes, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have like. a few. Yeah. You didn't make too many mistakes going through school, though, did you? Uh, tried not to. Yeah. You got a girl? No. <laughs> that's what I say. You didn't make too many mistakes. Uh, okay, James. Let's, uh, let's uh, try that. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll try your question on some of the others, like uh, Margaret Ann Wilson. Uh, which is Margaret Ann? You? I am. <laughs> yes, I guess you must be. Uh, I'm a brain boy. I can tell. Margaret Ann, uh, you are a senior. Yes, I am. At uh, Montrose High School. High School. All right. Uh, first of all, let's uh, see what you wrote on your on your paper. What what was that uh, idea you had? Well, I was wondering uh, if you had an opinion of yourself whether you would have an inferior opinion, which would it be better inferior opinion or a superior opinion of yourself? Not neutral, <laughs> either. I see. Are you asking me, for example, or uh -huh. anybody? I'd like to know. Uh, I see. You want to know whether you think, uh, I think that you should have an inferior or an... Uh, superior opinion. Superior opinion of yourself. Yes, uh-huh. Well, I think what you really mean there, don't you, is uh, that it's nice... Uh, would you mind getting off the mic cord there? Thank you, boy. <laughs> I had an inferior opinion to it just for a minute there. Uh, I think what you really mean is, uh, are you able to uh, evaluate yourself? Is that what you mean? Well, I was just wondering if I should be, well, maybe think I'm humble or uh, have a superior opinion of myself, have confidence in myself, or yeah. go along on my knees. Well, you can do that. Now, Sam has done that for years. <laughs> Everybody thinks he's walking. No, I'm just kidding about that. But I think you've really got a point there. Uh, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think, you, I think you've got it. Uh, no, uh, seriously, I think I know what you mean. Uh, certainly no one likes someone who uh, is uh, stuck up in the vernacular. Is that right? That's right. Who has a superior op opinion of himself. In other words, who thinks more of himself than the other people think of. But again, you have to have confidence in yourself. That's right, that's uh -huh. right. How do you get stuck in the vernacular? What? <laughs> Where is that? Oh, that's a, that's a great spot. Oh, is it? Oh, oh, yeah, vernacular is near Montrose, Michigan. Montrose, Michigan, boys. Oh, oh. Uh, 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 how do you feel about it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm supposed to have confidence in myself. Yeah. But <laughs> you just got to have middle ground there, don't you think? You think you can strike a middle ground? <laughs> yeah, I think you certainly right. can. Just like uh, when you're going to have your fortune told, you can strike a happy medium. <laughs> and it's awfully a good idea. <laughs> that, uh, no, but I really, I really think you can, uh, you can have a middle ground there. Just so your opinion of yourself is not much higher than the opinion other people have of you. I think you're just about right then. All right, now thank you. Try it anyway, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you think I was right? Or... I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's quite a deep subject we were in there, eh? What's your name? Jim Graves. Yeah, Jim. What kind of opinion you got of yourself? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't either. I never met you. Uh, I mean, you think you're going to amount to much? Can't tell yet. No, no. <laughs> but you have hopes, don't you? Yeah. I do, too, just looking at you. You're from Swayze, Indiana. That's right. And uh, you're in the, only in the eighth grade, aren't you? 
Yeah. Yeah. You got high school to think of, and then then what do you probably do? Be a farmer? Do you think? No. No. What? Oh, I don't know. I'd kind of like to be a doctor. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Just to show you that this guy's really thinking, and he may become a doctor after all. Uh, here's a little joke. I'll be Sue and you be Bob. He wrote down a joke here. Sue and Bob, okay? okay. I am Sue. I say to you, Bob, hey, Bob, let's think. No, let's do something you can do, too. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. Last night, I talked to uh, Dick Noel, our ailing singer, and his charming wife, Eleanor, and I'm very happy to report that Dick's getting along very, very well, but his voice is uh, still on the scratchy side, and he must stay in the remainder of the week, and... Uh, nurse that voice along so he can be back with you next Monday. We were lucky to secure young Gary Mann to take his place this week. Young 22-year-old fella. Sort of the wilt the stilt of, uh, <laughs> of the singing profession at six feet four. I guess there aren't any taller singers than you, Gary. Well, I, I'm not sure. I hope not. Because we go around saying I'm a tall singer, you know. Yeah. And uh, eliminate some of the competition. <laughs> That's right. At least it leads on, on the height <laughs> angle, huh? What kind of an opinion you got of yourself, Gary? Well, uh, a middle of the road type opinion. Middle of the road. You, 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 you run over that way. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> at least he stays on the right yeah. line, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think that's a pretty good way. In other words, you, you realize your potentialities and so on. You're not uh, unaware of them. And uh, yet you don't go around looking at yourself in the mirror all the time. Well, I know my downfalls, too. Yeah, that's so. right. You mean your bad points as well as the good ones, huh? Yes. Well, one of his good ones is singing. Listen to this. Never make eyes at the gals with the guys who are bigger than you. Stay in your class when you look at a lass She may belong to some big palooka Saying hello to a babe you don't know Isn't healthy or wise Now take my advice besides not being nice It can be bad for the eyes If you do uh -uh, Look out for Mr. Bigger Than You You'll be sorry if you tussle with a man of muscle. Don't ever wink at a gal with a geek who can take you and break you in two. No, never make eyes at the gals with the guys who are big, big, bigger than you. Get a load of that eye, boy, a Mr. Big Fat Wolf. That's the lesson there, my boy, in social etiquette. You should not forget, cause if you do, uh, uh, look out for Mr. Bigger Than You. You'll be sorry if you tussle with a man of muscle. Don't ever wink at a gal with a geek who can't take you and break you in two. No, never make eyes at the gals with the guys who are taller and tougher. Okay, Gary. Okie doke. Now comes our moment of silent prayer. Each in his own words, each in his own way. For a world united in peace, let us bow our heads and pray. memory time around the breakfast table. Don't know whether you saw this in uh, the April 6th issue of the Saturday Evening Post. This short little tiny poem, you might have missed it, but it's, it's something you shouldn't miss. Recollection of a very young person by Georgie Starbuck Galbraith. Once upon a time, I knew all the answers. I was a sage pontifical youth Top heavy with wisdom, for I was then privy to every secret of truth. But now, 
truth mutters to me in riddles. The difference, it appears, between omniscience and confusion is just about 20 years. Yes, it is march time now, and we're going to march here. Why don't you join us at home? Everybody, march. shook up. <laughs> Sir, I have I'm... a message for all the nice little boys and girls that marched with me today. Fine. Sit down. Oh. No. <laughs> Let's be nice to them, Sam. <laughs> Let's call on Gary Mann again, should we? This young fellow here uh, likes to sing. I think uh, your voice is particularly suited to uh, musical comedy type songs, don't you, Gary? Well, that's what most folks have told me. I uh, would like to get into musical comedy someday. I think you'd be fine. I, they got a they got one there on Broadway now called Little Abner. You'd never fit in that. But uh, <laughs> there are a lot of them that you could. Try night and day for us, huh? Be glad to. Like the beat, beat, beat of the tom tom when the jungle shadows fall. The tick, tick, tock of the stately clock As it stands against the wall Like the drip, drip, drip of the raindrops When the summer showers through So a voice within me keeps repeating You, you, you Night and day No matter, darling, where you are, I 
think of you. Night and day. Well, sir, I enjoy talking to that fella. I wonder what he think about Aunt Fanny. Let's get her in here, huh? Aunt Fanny. Ah, come on now. Be natural, Aunt Fanny. Well, I intend to. I've always felt coming down here and sitting and talking with you that we was actually just sitting around the breakfast table. Yes, that's what I And did. if we are, what are all these people doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking around at the cast... Awful lot of new faces here. Yes. I'll tell you, and the kind of new faces they are make it kind of tough on us old maps, don't well, you're it? You're not kidding, yeah. <laughs> well, I had uh, kind of heard that Mr. Noel has got the pip, is that right? Well, he's got a bad throat. A bad throat, yes. has he? Yes. My goodness. Mr. Ballantyne had a bad throat one time, wasn't that? Yes, uh, he did. Oh, what was that? Oh, I remember the time Prof I got her hands around it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that happens quite often. Well, uh, how is he getting? Is he better? Oh, yes. I talked to him. Well, that's too bad. Well, I don't mean it's too, too bad, bad that he's better. I mean, too bad I didn't know about it before. Oh, oh. Nettie had a medicine there that she always used to twist up for sore throats. It was made of uh, onions and the garlic and brown sugar. I don't actually know what it done for the throat. But uh, it kept people from offering more uh, remedies because it just wasn't around. <laughs> they oh, wouldn't stay. Yeah. <laughs> Why, uh, this young man now that's here, uh, who is he? Oh, Gary Mann, is he? He's a tall one, yes, ain't he? Yes, he is. Six foot Probably one. has to bend over to hit high C. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty girl, too. Yes, yes. That's Ann Leonardo. Oh. She's from California. From California. Whereabouts in California? Fresno. Oh, see. Uh, Nettie had a nephew uh, from there. Oh, really? Ain't that where they have all the grapes? Yes, it is. I remember that. And uh, he come out uh, there and uh, visited her uh, a couple of years ago. I never will forget. Had purple feet. <laughs> well, um, Purple feet. Uh, his, his blue uh, suede shoes faded. Oh, uh, oh. What it was. Yes. Well, you got a whole house full of young people here this morning. Have a lot of them. Yeah. High school uh, seniors, are they? Yes. Well, yes, uh, eighth graders. I, oh, I wonder uh, if, if, if is that is the same thing, huh? Oh, no. Four oh. years difference. Oh, oh, uh-huh. <coughs> they, they do more time to get to be a senior. That's right, yes. Uh, do they still have them high school plays that they used to have? Oh, Useful. Do, yeah. Well, I'll never forget the one that we had. If I live to be, uh, well, I don't tend to get that. No, I don't no. imagine. Yeah. But uh, anyway, you you know all kinds of people that was in it. There was Nettie. Well. She was in it. Uh, there was, uh, you've heard me remark about Delbart uh, uh, Dinglinger. Yeah. He was in it uh, there. And uh, then there was, uh, Annie was in it. Oh. Her elbow flew out in the second act. It's yes, but we caught it in the third. Oh, and was all right. Uh, Homar Hodak was in it. He was the villain. Oh, really? Yes, he, he got beat up something horrible. Uh, well, we show he wasn't a good actor, but he's got the kind of bones that knit fast. So we <laughs> had him in there. Then they were, uh, he did last because his pants got caught on a nail, and he went up uh, with the curtain in the beginning of the third act. Yeah. And uh, then there was the lead, as uh, that was Verbena Moots, and oh, was she horrible. 
just terrible. Yes. The papers come out the next day, and uh, they what they said about her acting, well, to the high heaven, is actually what it amounted to. For you, Aunt Pam. Hello? Yes, now, you tell them about that play. <laughs> I'll tell them about the horrible thing they said about the leading lady, and... Uh, I don't remember that she got sick. But the, they run in a substitute? Oh! Uh, never mind telling me who the sub... I'll tell you when the talking gets that close to home. Well, oh, I see what you mean. Then. You know, I got such a kick out of some of these letters I get, like one from Mrs. James Thor of Arlington, Massachusetts. Said I was really feeling real blue this morning. I was really feel blue this morning. And while making the boys' beds, I turned on the radio. There was the breakfast club. Now, I never turn on the radio on at that time anymore. And what a pleasant surprise. What a flood of memories it brought back. It reminded me I am a charter member of the breakfast club. That must be, what, 14 years ago? Remember when you sent out cards for charter members? Well, I never missed breakfast club then, and I'm so glad I've rediscovered it. When I got my membership card, I always thought that someday I might possibly get to see breakfast club. The opportunity never came. And when I became a member, uh, there was Derwood Kirby, Jack Baker, Nancy Martin, Harry Cogan, Marion Mann. My little girl who used to march around the room with the breakfast club is now 20 and married. <laughs> and the baby who used to bang on his high chair tray with a spoon while she marched is now almost 15. Well, now that I've rediscovered breakfast club, you can be sure I'll once more become a faithful listener. It's like running into an old friend. Someday I just might get to see your program. Best wishes and so on. That's uh, so nice when uh, we find an old listener who's come back again to the Breakfast Club after all these years. And I'd like to hear from more of you like that, too. It's, it's real refreshing and just a real great kick to hear from you Breakfast Clubbers. Now it looks like last call to breakfast to me. <laughs> Until tomorrow, then, Don McNeil and the whole gang say so long and be good to yourself. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.